Hi, this is Professor Hoi. Today I'm teaching a course on broadband network. This course is offered at Arizona State University as the course title Broadband Network with the number EEE 557. The subject is of course about broadband network. So the question that I'd like to start with is what really is broadband? Broadband, as the term suggests, means broad bandwidth, which means high-speed data and other sort of video or voice applications. So what really is broadband, it really depends on who you want to talk to. For the phone company, uh, 10, 20 years ago, anything that is faster than a dial modem speed of 64 kilobits per second is considered broadband. Whereas for wireless company these days in 3G, cellular phone network is something that is between 1 to 10 megabits per second. For 4G wireless network, you're talking about 100 megabits per second. Now for Wi-Fi network, 20 years ago we started with about 2 megabits per second and now we are going up to 5 megabits and even 50 megabits and eventually we would go to hundreds of megabits per second transmission speed using the 60 gigahertz transmission bandwidth. For cable company, they talk about broadband being more than 10 megabits per second and in fact they talk about gigabits per second transmission but you really have to share that sort of bandwidth among all people in the neighborhood. Phone companies start to talk about fiber to the home, which they lay fiber at least to uh, close to the curb where you live, and, uh, or they can bring directly fiber into your house. So fiber to the home, you're talking about gigabits per second transmission speed, and very few places today offer cheap and fast multi-gigabits per second transmission to the home. Now, when you talk about broadband, very often we refer to the bandwidth requirement, which is what this first bullet is about. But when we talk about broadband, we also refer to the kind of service that is provided. For example, we may talk about IPTV, transmitting TV over the internet protocol kind of network. We can talk about voice over IP, and these days uh, a lot of voice traffic is carried over the IP network. For example, Skype is effectively a broadband audio or video signal over the IP network. So we can talk about all sorts of services, may it be voice or video or data over the IP network. And also, you can talk about the kind of service that has to deal with local wireless networking, and you may have all sorts of 802.11, ABCD, and uh, these days also you have 802.11 AD, which stands for Wi-Fi at the 60 gigahertz frequency channel with a bandwidth of 56 to 64 gigahertz, a total of 8 gigahertz of bandwidth that's available for home networking. You can have 802.15, which deals with ultra-wideband uh, communication. So you have a large variety of standard that is promoted by IEEE to do all sorts of local wireless networking that doesn't require you to pay for it. Or you can do data networking over a wireline network that include all sorts of Ethernet communications. Uh, you can talk about 10, uh, 100 base T at 100 megabits per second. Gigabit Ethernet these days go from 1 gigabit at least, and 10 gigabit is already pretty available for corporate networking. And bigger companies such as Facebook are requiring 40 gigabits per second Ethernet or 100 gigabits per second Ethernet in order to pump 
the large volume of data that they need to send to Facebook users. And very soon people are starting to talk about terabit Ethernet, and that would, at this point, would be prohibitively expensive. With the 3G network, people are starting to offer vi uh, video over wireless. And there used to be standards such as H.263 or H.264 that provide low or high quality video over the wireless channel. But these days, if you do 4G networking over the wireless network, you can do pretty good quality, high definition video over wireless. Uh, and then there's also the next generation of IP backbones where you talk about uh, networks that has a length speed of terabit per second and switches that can go to a total throughput of a petabit per second. So these are the subject that we're going to deal with. And so let me just describe a little bit about the administrative details of this course. Now the textbook is High Performance Computer Network, second edition by Professor Waran and Varaya at UC Berkeley. And each lecture, I'm going to describe the reading that you need to do uh, after you watch the video. Supplementary text is my book written in 1990. Uh, the title of that is called Switching on Traffic Theory for Integrated Broadband Network. At this point, uh, you probably would be able to get it on the internet. But I am going to provide postscript file of these, at least uh, the first eight chapters of the book online so that you are free to download it and read it. Uh, a lot of the material is going to come out from my book. But it's a fairly advanced book, so uh, you, I may not be going into full uh, theoretical details. But if you're interested to find out more details or to find out the proof of some of what are uh, the theorems in the course, you can go directly, download the uh, chapters of my book, and read it yourself. Uh, when I teach the course at Arizona State U, I use extensively Blackboard, which I am going to post these PowerPoint files and the doc files as well as homeworks, homework solution and sample tests for you so that you can gauge how much you have grasped the material. I will be posting six homework. If you're taking the class at ASU, I have graded the grades very loosely. Uh, it account for about 20% of the grade. And also I have two tests that I will be posting online. And the tests cover respectively the first half and the second half of the course. And each of that will count about 40%. And this is what I practice, the grade scale uh, for the overall uh, number grade you get. You will get a letter grade like that. And that will be not a final. So I hope that you enjoy watching this video. And I would strongly encourage you to read the box or read some part of the book that I've written and uh, if you are interested you can also do the homework and do some of the sample quizzes and so they can get a feeling of the theory of broadband networks.